Guns, guns, guns! Rise and Shine is one of those games that you just have a feeling is going to be great the moment you see it in action. And there are plenty of games like that. Unfortunately, quite a few of them turn out to be disappointing or downright bad. So what does this say about the game I'm about to review? Well, nothing. I was just trying to uh, fill out a few seconds before I, you know, got right into it. Game Earth, Gam Earth, whatever, the planet where the story takes place is under attack by Space Marine forces, and it's up to the legendary warrior to... Oh, shit. Uh, it's up to this whippersnapper to take up arms and save his world. You're given plenty of story bits to chew on, and at a decent pace. Plus, the characters representing the forces of good and evil make sense if you get the references and also feel that certain newer games helped usher in an era of gaming stagnation that swallows up everything else, but I'm not trying to say I feel that way or anything. <laughs> Although, let's be real, that's probably not what the devs were trying to say either. There's a twist midway through the game that I honestly did not see coming, and the way it was handled is just awful. You know how most stories will throw a silhouette over the obviously evil commander if there's some sort of reveal coming, then hit the main character at the end of Act 2? Yeah, this game isn't really written that well. Not in how its characters are handled, or in general. W what you're not gonna bother referencing a game character here, devs? W what you're, you're not gonna give this girl a name, devs? You're gonna tiptoe around and not directly reference? It's dangerous to go but don't take this! Damn, Super Mega Team, this stuff writes itself. Thankfully, the gameplay is much better put together, as expected of this team of industry vets. Rise will shine a weapon of, well, middling power through various destroyed cities as he tries to make his way to the King's Palace. Of course, he's just a child facing some insurmountable odds, so he just gets killed as soon as he leaves them all. Ha! Luckily, Shine's claim to fame, aside from his crappy personality, is his ability to resurrect those who use him as long as they are under the watchful eye of a guide, so any and all deaths are negated with the press of a button. This game is built as a puzzle platformer, and that description is spot on, since you use normal and electric bullets in conjunction with radio control and grenade modifiers to flip switches and clear obstructions, oftentimes while under fire from enemies. The Nexus forces are some cheap bastards, flooding the screen with foes and bullets to keep you mobile, and that level of enemy concentration really clashes with the control scheme. Firstly, you have to hold the left trigger to unholster the gun, followed by precise aiming with the right analog stick, and it's all completed with shots fired using the right trigger. Though you end up getting used to this, the whole unholster process feels unnecessary and is better left to times when you're popping out of cover. Aiming down sights slows Rice down tremendously, constantly leaving him in harm's way unless you dash out of the path of bullets or use the aforementioned cover. Too bad it's all destructible and the dash has no iframes, so like I've said, you're gonna die. It also doesn't help that switching weapon modifiers is mapped to a single button and not the d-pad, so screw-ups are bound to happen when things get hectic. Add the fact that the sub-bosses are puzzles and can sometimes be flanked with enemies, and you're in for a pretty frustrating first play. It's all over in a few hours though, and subsequent runs for secrets or achievements will be much faster due to the advanced knowledge of upcoming roadblocks. Also, just letting you know, only the basketball minigame is required. You're welcome. I praised Tailwind for its presentation, but holy crap does this game crush it in that regard. Almost everything in this game is hand-drawn and lovingly detailed in a cartoony style that is colorful and consistent. Except here. Somebody really liked Doodoo Brown and Orange. Also, the main character designs are a bit boring compared to those pulled from other games. Oh, I mentioned references earlier, but the levels are jam-packed with them, and it feels good to just go back and pick out the reference titles from all the dead bodies and ruined buildings. All of the sound effects feel punchy and appropriate, with the exception of the Discharge Audio Shine, which sounds more like a pop gun than the large hand cannon it is. The music is as moody or bombastic as it needs to be, but there's no way to listen to it at your leisure. There was also at least one point during my music capture that sound effects were still mixed in, so there are a few mixing issues in the game. You won't notice them though. Look, I'm, I'm really reaching here. The point is the presentation is freaking outstanding. If more time had been put into balancing enemy layouts, showcasing puzzle hints, and creating a better control scheme that used every button, Rise and Shine would have been just about perfect in my opinion. 
The design is great, the nods to other games are novel, and the presentation feels like the new bar for 2D side-scrollers that don't use sprite-based graphics. Even with the short length, its combination of low price and pick-up-and-play nature means that you won't necessarily feel burned when you're done with it. But if you do feel the price is a bit high, it's not a bad idea to wait for a sale. Some extra VR-style missions with that grid background would also be cool. Personally though, for me, I find it really easy to just rise to the occasion and play it again.